Hi there, everybody. This is Carrie Hamblin, the CEO and president of the Las Cruces Green Chamber of Commerce, coming to you again with another one of our Zoom chats. And oh my gosh, this is one of my favorite people to talk to because we, even before we start recording, we start nerding out and um, it's super fun. I've got Maria LaCare Diego from A New Hope Therapy Center. Hi, Maria. How are you? Hi, Carrie. I'm good. I'm still laughing from our pre, pre-recorded pre I, I know. We, we we could go on and on. and, and you We know, really and, could. And, and I miss the Darth Vader in the back of your, you used to have the Darth, like the three-foot oh, Darth yes. Vader back he's there. Over the, he's over in the corner getting ready for his debut at, uh, at the conference. So, oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, folks, we do these Zoom chats with our members. It's a member benefit to all Green Chamber members, and it's a way of uplifting what they're doing in the community. And our businesses are doing so many incredible things. And so with New Hope Therapy Center, it's been a while since we've been able to talk. You've been super busy. Um, <laughs> and uh, as a therapist, um, you know, you are really uh, incredible with kids. And that's always an area that you've got to be really just thoughtful. and mm-hmm. And, and it's kind of hard because when you see a kid experiencing trauma, I mean, it's heartbreaking. And yeah. so, you know, we talked about like ways that you therapists like to relieve your stress and and uh, and nerd out and all the great ways that you do. Um, but you did a play conference. And so you were at a play conference, a play therapy conference. So tell yes. me about that. And like, why is play therapy or how is it so, in essence, in some cases, like life saving and life changing? Yeah, yeah. So uh, happily, I so I'm a member of the Amer- the Association for Play Therapy. Um, it's an international um, organization. Um, I have also served on our New Mexico board. I've served three terms there before. Um, there is, is understanding how kids communicate, right? So. Um, Kids, not all kids. I mean, if you're if your child happens to have a therapist uh, as a parent, they they may have some big words at a very young age, uh, but typically kids don't have words like irritated and frustrated and annoyed. Um, they don't really understand what mad feels like or sad feels like or scared. Mm-hmm. Um, and and how they communicate. Children communicate. I mean, pre verbally, right through through signing through play. Um, <clears throat> As th- as a play therapist, you are trained in how to understand their communication, which comes through how they're playing, um, the toys that they choose, the themes that they show in their play. Um, sometimes that play is the same thing over and over and over again, because that's how their brain needs to process what has happened to them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one theme that that all kids struggle with is power and control, because our kids don't have a lot of power and control. Um, And how awful does that feel when everything is decided for you and done for you? Um, And so play therapy gives them a nice outlet where they can be in control and have some power and some decision making um, in a safe environment and learn how to do that for themselves so that they can then, you know, set boundaries for themselves and like speak up for themselves and be able to say like, you know, um, Molly pushed me and I am sad because I thought we were friends. Right. Yeah. Like that is a really complex emotion for kiddos. Whereas what we see is, you know, we get complaints that kids are hitting and they're fighting and they're, you know, they're talking back, they're not listening. Um, and so play therapy allows us to have the tools and understanding to, to hear them where they're at mm-hmm. and then communicate back with them in a language that they understand. Yeah. Um, and so it can look uh, like a variety of things. Uh, this last play therapy conference, I will tell you, I came out of it going, I will be adding VR systems and digital play to my work because yeah. it is so powerful. Really? Um, like, what, what did you see in the virtual reality? Uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, right. So there, uh, Dr. Rachel Altvader um, out of Maryland. Uh, like, oh my God, a huge fan girl of hers. Yeah. Um, but she she was sharing with us. We actually got to play with VR systems there. So it's not just like here it is in theory, but like here's the theory, and now you're gonna do it. Um, so everything from like family therapy work, 
um, to addressing traumas, to setting boundaries in a very safe but realistic setting. So I don't know if you've played with any of those Oculus sets or. I try to avoid them. I'm 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 still like <laughs> I'm old school Atari and Nintendo. I'm like I I don't need any more of that stuff. I don't have time yeah. for it. But I, I I understand it. It is like the 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 like you think. Yep. Like I've seen yeah. videos of people walking into doors. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it is. It is like really all encompassing, um, while being in a safe environment, right? So that can be. I mean, it was initially um, some of the first work was done with like vets, right? Like, oh, yeah. um, you know, reliving trauma and and being triggered, but in a safe environment. And how do you regulate through those things? Um, to family therapy, there's this game called Acron where uh, one person is the tree and everybody else are the acorns and you have to work together, or all the squirrels, you have to work together to shake all the acorns down and then gather them. Um, and so you can use that in group settings or in like family therapy because it requires communication and problem solving, but in a very fun way, um, yeah. right? So for, for people who traditional talk therapy um, may not be their jam. Um, play therapy, while it is mainly geared for kids, I use it with my adults. I use it with my couples. I will do it with families. Um, it just kind of helps put that that playfulness back into our relationships because without that, what kind of a relationship do we have, right? Mm -hmm. Like when people first connect, it's, it's usually around play. Uh, when you're dating someone, right? It's like all the fun things and you go and you have experiences together. When you have a baby, it's playing with the baby and making faces at the baby, right? It's all relationship based. Yeah. Um, and so when we can add that spark of playfulness back and it can look different for, for everybody involved, but that strengthens the relationship and what, what else am I working on if not that? Yeah. Well, you know, this, this, I know it's completely different, but this kind of, um, reminds me of like EMDR, you know, the, the, the kind of resetting your brain by using yeah. lights. And I know there are another, other approaches as well to it, but, um, you know, it's somebody wearing goggles. Yes. And, yeah. um, and so, um, you know, and, and it, it's no surprise that there's now technology as part of that play therapy, you know, because I think many of us, if we've heard that term, we're just always thinking of watching kids play with dolls. Sure. You know, and that and and that's kind of a very basic layperson, <laughs> but we know that there's way more to play therapy uh, unless we've gone through it. So, um, you know, part of with the the information that you're getting from like this play conference, um, you know, which also seems to be like one of the best conferences to go to, just in terms <laughs> of fun. I used to think public radio conferences were fun, but now, oh my gosh. I mean, you're um, playing VR systems and doing TikToks in the hallway. So, <laughs> you know, and and we were talking about that as like, you know, I'm so glad that there's like outlets for you because you you as a therapist, you are listening to, in some cases, some really horrible yeah. horrible things that people have experienced and and had to and had to go through, and it's hard for us as humans not to take that on too in some way or another. And I know that you get trained to be able to, to put up bubbles and to, to be able to protect yourself. But, um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's refreshing to me to see that, that for folks who are taking on so much and really, and especially after the pandemic, because I'm sure all of you are like, your shoulders are weighed even heavier because just mental health issues just amplified Absolutely. 10 times, you know, um, but, you know, when we were talking and, and this is something that we had we had shared uh, with uh, through an e-blast was your upcoming conference, because, mm -hmm. you know, all of us in southern New Mexico have a lot of incredible things going on. This conference is one of those. And we get really tired of northern New Mexico taking all the credit for it when we're like, hey, we're doing things down here. Mm -hmm. And so you've got your Sith conference mm -hmm. and there is certainly every intention that you intended uh, to have it be a Star Wars reference. 100%. Absolutely. 100%. And, um, and so tell me about like why, you know, planning a conference is, is challenging and, you know, I'm sure you're elbow deep in it since we're just a couple <laughs> weeks out. Um, but the conference is called the Supportive Innovations for Therapeutic Heroes Conference. So mm -hmm. how did the idea come up and, um, you know, and, and what are you hoping that folks get out of it? Yeah. Um, so uh, 
I had done small, small group trainings before where I found people I was really interested in. I brought them to Las Cruces and like, you know, 25 of us would get together and be like, oh, Sophia and Sire is the best. Uh, Dreyla and Mendy is amazing. Um, and then the pandemic hit, right? And, and we, we had to sw switch gears and shift and our focus shifted for our, our group. And we needed to provide more services rather than um, training opportunities. Um, and then I was, uh, I was at El Paso Comic Con, uh, with my cohort doing a panel and I was like, I miss, I miss this. I miss the community aspect of what we do because you're absolutely right. And thank you for recognizing that the work we do is so incredibly hard. Yes. Um, and I miss being able to meet with my team and stress relieve and, and throw ideas around and just be within our field of like-minded people going, you're doing hard work. I see you. I see you doing hard work. Great job. Keep going. I'm here for you. Um, and so the conference was kind of, it was kind of born out of that. Yeah. Um, I wanted to provide a place where um, like our overarching theme this year is reconnecting and re-energizing. Um, because the last three years for, for mental health providers has been heavy, heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and we all pivoted and we learned how to do it on online and we learned how to do play and stuff online. Um, but we've always been, it's been go, 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 go for the last three years. Um, and even when we were learning online, I know most of us were like on our webinars and still doing notes <laughs> and still yeah. scheduling and still doing. Um, so I wanted to create something that was come, come to me for two days. Um, I will give you the CEs that you need for your license, but what I'm offering you is an experience to reconnect with other people doing the same work. And I want to give you some exciting new um, tools and theories and thoughts so that you keep up that excitement for what we're doing. Um, and so that's how the Sith conference came to be. Yeah. Um, and it's going to happen in my hometown because dance, we deserve it. <laughs> Everything good that comes to New Mexico does not have to just be up north. Right. Um, we have a incredible uh, network of providers here for, for mental health services. We have some really quality providers and good services being offered. And I want to honor our time uh, and our money by providing something that's local and affordable um, that's going to help them just stay connected and recharge them to keep doing what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and I think so many of us, you know, as we start to kind of come out of this this forced hibernation um and i'm was completely happy with doing the forced hibernation i don't want people to die um you know it's like uh we're like oh yeah we get to see so and so and then after a while we're like oh my god i'm so overstimulated i need to go home um so we're still trying to get back into that comfort level of interaction with people and you all have been like really doing it through the entire time it's not like you've been hibernating you've just been doing it in a different way Right. And so when you say CEs, those are continuing ed credits, right? So that, you know, as professionals, you have to continue doing that in order yes. to kind of stay fresh. Right. Yes. So our license requires um, so many every licensing cycle. And depending on your license, you have like specific ones that you need to obtain. Um, traditionally, that means like traveling or, you know, you can only do so many online for certain licenses or credentials. Um, some of them have to be in person and that requires time and travel and expense. Um, and so this year I'm excited because we're offering CEs that are specific for supervision, culture, Ooh. ethics, um, and play. So re the ones that we need for licensure and credentialing, if you're going down that path, um, and right here, we're at the convention center, like we're right here in town, um, which has been really exciting because we've had people who are coming over from like Silver and Alamogordo um, and El Paso. That's like, oh, this is this I can do. This yeah. I can do. Yeah. Um, and it not just be uh, I mean, I, I shared a little bit with you, but not just be like, oh, come and listen to people lecture at you all day. Uh, come and have an experience. Um, I'm a super nerd. This is my nerdy conference. 
um, you know, we're going to have like a full fledged working R2D2 there. Um, well, you know, the thing is, if people can get it with Sith conference, <laughs> I mean, if they're not, they, they need to get up on their pop culture um, I mean... if, they don't, if they don't get that connection. <laughs> And so, you know, as we wrap up, Maria, you know, you've got uh, some exciting like workshops that are really going to be impactful for folks. Is there one that, I mean, all of this obviously is, is you know, from your heart because it's just this, this project that you felt so strongly about, but is there like one or two workshops that you're like giggly about that you like, can't <laughs> wait? I mean, yes, of course, of yeah. course. Um, yeah, so we, so all of our, our presenters are local or localized people. So they're all like our own people with the exception of, of one or two who are um, coming from close communities. Um, but we're doing like uh, documentation of geek therapy. So we're going to help you write your notes, which is required if you want to get paid by insurances. Um, so we're going to help you do that. But we're also going to show you how we document all the fun things we do in geek therapy sessions uh, so you can get paid, um, which I think is super. Because it's, it's like, it, can you give like an example of what what is actually happening to how you have to document it? Oh, sure. Yeah. So okay. um, we, we, we don't want to put in our note that we played over, uh, overcooked. Uh, with our client uh, for 30 minutes on the switch because uh, the insurance company doesn't care about that. Um, what we do want to say is that we um, supported our client through a stress tolerance event and utilized coping skills to regulate their mood and affect. Uh, so that, cause that's what insurance will pay. Damn. <laughs> but you know, that's the thing. I mean, and, and gosh, I remember my first year, my first, I'm strong supporter of therapy. Uh, best hardest work you'll ever do um and I remember it's like you know it's such we can go on a rant about the bs of insurance and how it's ridiculous that you have to go through all these different things when like people are getting help mm -hmm. they're not self-harming they're not contemplating uh having suicidal ideations um they're being able to function for crying out loud why do you have to do this certain language so we could go off on that whole the whole rant but um how fascinating Yes, that's going to be fun. fun. Oh my gosh. Well, I know that we could talk about this for a long time, but um, we want to go ahead and let you get back to your time. And if you're interested in this conference now, she's only got five seats left. So if you're a therapist and you haven't registered for the Sith conference, she's got five seats left. The link is above or below, all depending on how you're looking at this. If as somebody who is not a professional therapist, but is interested in some of the techniques that Marie has talked about, you can find them at New Hope Therapy Center um, and we'll have the website there and the phone number that you can call. And so Maria, it's always so fun um, to talk with you <laughs> and uh, to learn about just these really innovative ways in terms that, um, you know, that, that make therapy much less intimidating because so often people are just like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to share with them things that make me feel bad about myself. I don't want to make other people feel bad about myself. Um, you know, there's a myriad of, of reasons why people are terrified of therapy and they're all awesome. legit. They're all legit. Um, but I appreciate everything that you're trying to do to try and break down some of those barriers so that people don't feel as terrified to do some incredible work. Um, so thank you so much for all that you do. And you and every single therapist is just, you know, your, your blessings all around. My pleasure. It's, it's, I mean, we're not in it for any other reason than we believe in it. Yeah. Yeah. No. And it's so, so needed. So thank you, my friend. I know I'll see you soon. Everybody yes. else, if you're a member of the Green Chamber and you'd like to do a Zoom chat, uh, you can contact me here through the Facebook page, or you can go ahead and email me at carrie at localluscruces.com. And I'll be more than happy to do this. These are always fun to do and to uplift you as a business and what you're doing in our community. So Maria, I will see you soon. Good yes. luck on the conference. And thank you. uh and we're not in May. So is it corny for me to say May the 4th be with you? It no, is, right? Is it appropriate? Okay. No? Yeah, it's okay. always appropriate. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All right. May the, 4th, May the 4th be with you, baby, on this conference. I know you're going to wrap it. <laughs> Thanks, Carrie. All right. Thanks so much.